If you ever had the problem that your monitor or TV just stops working at some point, then there's a big chance that you can repair it by replacing the dodgy capacitors on the circuit board. And when you think about it, almost every circuit of consumer electronics has such capacitors in one form or another. So in this video, let's talk about what a capacitor is, what the ratings on it means and what functions he fulfills in our circuits. Let's get started. In order to understand some fundaments of capacitors, it would be the best to build one ourselves. I used this aluminum sheet and made one line in the middle of the material and another line at one third of the length of the other side. Then I used my saw to cut out my four pieces and used my clamps to position the two smaller ones parallel to each other with a very small distance. And that is basically a capacitor. Even the wiring symbol looks like this. If I hook it up to a 30 volt power source by connecting plus to one side and minus to the other, we can see that just for a fraction of a second a very small amount of current is flowing. This current, aka electron flow, charged up the plates by creating an electron axis on the negative side and thus an electrostatic field is created between the plates which stores our electric energy. If we measure the capacitance, we see that it is around 50 to 60 picofarads. That is nothing. And in my case, the capacitor cannot even hold a charge when I disconnect it from the power source. Normally, they do this and can supply the stored energy from the electrostatic field just like a battery can supply power. Just way, way less power. The more capacitance and maximum voltage rating it got, the more power it can deliver. Now back to our plate capacitor. We can actually improve the capacitance by increasing the surface of the plates. This way there is more space for electrons and thus a bigger electrostatic field. And if we get the plates even closer to each other without touching them, we can also increase the capacitance since the force on the electrons to the positive plate increases and thus there is again more space for other electrons. But we are still only at 110 picofarads with the big plates. To improve this even farther, we can also add a dielectric material like distilled water in the middle of the plates. The H2O dipoles align with the electrostatic fields and increase the force on the electrons which again creates more space for others. I was even capable of creating a 2.5 microfarad capacitance like this, which is not bad. This is basically how all capacitors work, in one way or another. If we take apart a real life example like this electrolytic capacitor, we can see it also just contains of metal films with a dielectric material in the middle. And since the metal is very close to each other and the dielectric material is certainly not a perfect isolator, there is always a voltage limit given. Everything above has the potential to create a spark over and thus destroying your capacitor. And it's also important to not reverse the polarity of the electrolytic ones. They surely don't like that as well. Let's move on to how they behave in DC and AC circuits. And for this you might want to watch my inductor coils video beforehand since there are many relations between those two. First of all, let's take a look at switching operations. This time the voltage of a capacitor cannot change instantly because it needs to build up its electrostatic fields or turn it into another kind of energy. But the current will change immediately and will slowly decrease while the capacitor reaches its maximum voltage. This is used to keep voltages at a stable level at the output of your power supply or to decouple an IC in your circuit. We can also use them in combination with a resistor to charge them up in a specific time. This way they can be used to create different signals, like a square wave with this 555 timer. If we move over to AC signals with this sine wave, we can also find out that a capacitor just like a coil creates another form of resistance, called capacitive reactance. 
But in contrast to coils, the capacitance and frequency is indirect proportional to the value of reactance. That means if I decrease the capacitance, less current will flow and this way our LED will not light up very much anymore. And if I decrease the frequency, it's the same, less current will flow. The final formula for the capacitive reactance looks like this. Since we know that this is basically a frequency based resistor, we can easily build our C filters which keep certain low frequencies out or certain high frequencies out. And there is no big difference between RL and RC filters. You usually use RC because capacitors are mostly cheaper and small in comparison to coils. Lastly, let's hook up our microwave motor to our power line and we see that it still creates a phase shift of around 36 degrees. As I told you before, this creates reactive power which strains our power grid. In order to get rid of this, we can add a capacitor in parallel which also creates a phase shift but in the other direction. This compensates our inductive load and relieves the power grid from the reactive power. And with that being said, you already know quite a lot about capacitors. I hope you liked this video. If so, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. That would be awesome. Consider supporting me through my Patreon campaign to keep such videos coming. Stay creative and I will see you next time.